Look at that stud of a rainbow. Wow. What a beautiful fish. Incredible. He's heavy. He's <laughs> super heavy. Wow. Very nice. Fish on the trigger spoon. Oh man, that feels like a good fish. Of course, I'm going pretty fast. Wow. It's on the lead core. That was about 10 feet deep on a copper, I believe, a copper trigger. Not the Trigger Spoon Junior, the full size. I was uh, heading back to the boat ramp here, so I wanted to bump up my speed, so I, I went ahead and put on a full size Trigger Spoon, actually two of them, and uh, they both been getting whacked. This feels like a good fish. Man, I love that lead core, baby. It's just so simple. It's just super effective. I know right where I am in the water column at all times. It's just super simple. This wind is messing with me big time, making it tough to steer. There we go. I'm into the top shot. I'm running a uh, 50 foot top shot today. 50 feet of uh, 17 pound fluoro and then a uh, 48 inch 10 pound fluorocarbon leader off of a trolling swivel. And that fish is putting up a tussle. Staying down. Oh yeah. Oh nice rainbow. Nice rainbow. Because I don't have my net today so. wear him down a little more. Oh, he's active now. Okay. Trigger spoon, baby! Getting it done, ha <laughs> ha! Copper trigger spoon. Man, that's a good color. That is just, uh, just fantastic. That spoon has been working so well all over Northern California. And uh, it's working here at Rollins. It works on holdovers, it works on wild trout. Good thing I fought him gentle. He came right off the hook. Anyway, we'll get him back in the lake. That dandy trout jumped all over that spoon. That over there, tangled up again. But, woo! There we go, back in the lake. <laughs> oh man, that was cool. Howdy guys, I'm Cal Kellogg and this is the Fish Hunt Shoot Productions YouTube channel. Um, I've been spending a lot of time guiding this spring. Um, I've been on the boat almost every day and when I'm not on the boat, my partner Wes has been out on the boat. So the FHS boat has been running and uh, we've been catching a lot of trout and we've been meeting a lot of fine folks and uh, we've actually had some recurring questions from some of our clients on the boat and these questions have been replicated in emails and comments back to us through the channel here on YouTube. And uh, here's one of the, the most common questions. I'll get guys on the boat and I'll be like, okay, this rod's lead core, this rod's top lining, this rod's lead core, and this rod here is going down on the downrigger. And guys will shake their head and they'll ask me, hmm, what is lead core? Okay. And I get that question emailed to me quite a bit too. Now, it's a very basic question for you, you know, you old, old timers out there, you experienced guys out there, you're thinking, man, that's a pretty simplistic question. Everybody knows what lead core is. And I thought the same thing, but there's no bad question. And you know, in reality, lead core has fallen out of favor out here on the West Coast, you know, over the last, say, 30 years with the advent of, of downriggers, both electric downriggers and crank downriggers. Um, guys just aren't being exposed to lead core as much as they had been back in the 70s and 80s, you know, back then. So, without further ado, this is lead core. This is a brand new spool of suffix lead core. I just go with the, the standard stuff. You'll see some really fancy stuff out on the market. And I'll explain why I go with the standard stuff in just a second. But as you can see, this is 18 pound test lead core line. 
And uh, lead core line gives you the ability to get your lure down um, in the water column. And here's why. Here's the line as, as it sticks out of the box here. And uh, what you have is you have a woven, a woven, try to say that a couple times, a woven sheath, but let me see how I can get a hold of this. Inside of that sheath, you'll see right there, that is a very soft, you can bend it, it's a very soft lead wire. You see that right there? Okay, lead, lead's heavy, lead sinks. When you have a lead wire inside of a woven sheath, that line is gonna sink into water column. Now, lead core, the, the entire spool is colored in 10 yard increments. The first 10 yards in this case is red, behind that it might be blue, behind that it might be brown, behind that it might be purple, green, black, whatever. Every 10 yards, the color changes. And the rule of thumb is one color of lead core, 30 feet of lead core, when trolling two miles an hour with a with a fly or a spoon, something that doesn't put up a bunch of water resistance, is gonna get you down five feet in the water column. Now, back in the old days, guys would take huge pen reels and they would put this entire spool of lead core on that reel. And there's 10 colors of lead core in here. And uh, they'd have a big giant reel and they'd have a big heavy rod and uh, they would fight the trout on that heavy gear and they wouldn't fight much, but it was a very effective way to fish. Well, I'm one of the guys here in the West Coast that has popularized using what, what I call a hybrid lead core rig. And you can look it up on the channel here, but my, my hybrid rig looks like this. Got a little bit of mono on the spool of the reel to keep things from slipping. Then you have 20 pound test braid followed by three colors of lead core, followed by a fluorocarbon top shot of say 20 feet to 50 feet long, depending on what you're trying to do, and then a trolling swivel, and then your eight pound test fluorocarbon leader where you actually attach your lure. Now, that may sound complicated, but once you've done it, once you've set one of the rigs up, if you've ever gone out on my boat and you've watched us fish the rigs, it's actually very simple. What that does, is it allows me to get the benefits of lead core while using much lighter tackle, okay? If I put out my three colors of lead core, I'm 15 feet deep. If I put out 25 feet of that very thin, very strong braided line, I'm 20 feet deep. If I put out 50 feet of my braid, I'm 25 feet deep. And that's about as deep as I go with lead core. If the fish are deeper than that, I'm going with downriggers and divers. But I can very comfortably target fish in the top 25 feet of the water column with my hybrid rigs. And uh, the rig is such an effective fish catcher that I've actually developed my own rod, my, my iconic yellow lead core rods to go along with that method. But I'm kind of I'm kind of getting too in depth here. The bottom line is, this is lead core. Lead core line is, is a woven sheath with a lead wire inside. It comes in various weights. Um, it, it comes in 15 pound test, 18 pound test, 25 pound test. As you get up in test, you get a larger diameter. Um, the strength of the line comes from the sheath not from the lead wire. So as you get up in diameter, you start needing to use a larger and larger reel. And that's why I use either 15 or preferably 18 pound test with my hybrid rig. So I hope that clears things up for you. Um, I haven't actually weighed it, but when I take the three colors of lead core off my reel, I ball it up in my hand, it feels like it weighs upward of two ounces. But that two ounces, rather than just hanging a two ounce sinker on your line, that two ounces of weight is spread out over 90 feet of line, okay? So it gets you down to the depth where you wanna be, but it, it doesn't you know, put a lot of drag on your gear. It cuts right through the water, very little stretch. When you combine it with fluorocarbon and that braid backing, very little uh, stretch, very sensitive. I could see a spoon working back, you know, over a hundred feet when I'm using my hybrid lead core rig. So it's super sensitive. That's important. If I pick up a leaf, I know it almost instantly. I'll see the rod working and it'll, oop, oop, something, something's wrong back there. I got to reel it in. I got a leaf or a pine needle or the, the spoon is, you know, 
fouled itself or something like that. Anyway, for all you guys that were wondering what lead core is, how it works, what it's good for, that's uh, that's my explanation. Um, I'm sure I missed some, some of the finer points. Oh yeah, last but not least, I said I was gonna mention this. What I find, when I tie the knots on my hybrid rig, I'll pull that lead sheath back and I'll, I'll pop out the lead. Of course, I'll do it on like eight inches of line and then I'll use this part that doesn't have the lead core in it to tie my knots. What I find if I go with the more expensive, higher quality lead core, it's bonded. The sheath is bonded to that lead core really well and it's really hard to worm the line back and break off the lead core. So that's that's one of the cases where the quality is so high, it kind of defeats the purpose of what I'm using the line for. So Wes and I, we go with the standard suffix lead core, um, just the, 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 the basic entry level stuff. We're very satisfied with it. It's very strong, it's very reliable, and it lasts for a long time. If you don't get line twist, into the lead core, it will last for a long time, well over a year, and we fish a lot. Um, the downfall of lead core, though, is twist. If you get twist in there, you'll start, it'll start to get bumpy first, and then the lead core will start to break inside. It's still strong, but it's not smooth through the guides. It gobs up in the guides. It's, it's just, it needs to be changed. So, um, you wanna fight line twist at all costs, and uh, if you haven't tried lead core, I suggest you get some, especially if you fish, we fish it from the big boat a lot, but especially if you fish from a smaller craft, a kayak, a canoe, stuff like that. Um, I, try, I try not to use my, uh, my downrigger unless I absolutely have to. And uh, you saw that little look on my face? My microphone cord is hanging down there, so I hope we got sound on this. I will check it out. but. Uh, fingers crossed. Anyway, guys, stuff happens when you're out here in the country filming. I'll catch you next time right here on YouTube. If you're looking for gear, you know where to go. Fishhuntshoot.com. I'll catch you later. Stay safe out there.